This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social. Delighted to be joined here today. We're in Leicester with the white rhino, Dave Allen. How are you, Dave? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Don't talk like that into the microphone. It looks very awkward. Okay. <laughs> uh, talk to me, Dave. It's been a while since I caught up with you. I think the last time was the day after the Bracamonte fight. Pleased to report that you're looking in better shape now than you were then. Yeah, you know, I uh, had a bit of time off. You know, we had a talk. Um, about the December fights obviously I'm not fighting Saturday in Sheffield I'm not fighting at the O2 had a bit of time off freshening myself up I'm down here sparring Dylan White not doing too many rounds you know I didn't want to get knocked about but Dylan asked me to spar and um, we we drawn up a good friendship after our fight and, and ever since he's been good to me and he's doing a few rounds and helping him to prepare for the Chisora fight so so yeah that's all I've been doing really doing a bit of, bit of training with Lance Adam Bills for a few days uh, nothing heavy duty, just ticking over. Hopefully a big fight uh, with Lucas Brown coming up in April next year. So just just having a bit of time off, really resting my brain in all manners. Mm. Now we'll come on to the Adam Booth stuff in a bit. Um, tell me about this week, because as you mentioned, the last time I spoke to you was after the Bracamonte fight. I think I kind of overstepped what's probably should have been said as a journalist and I was like many other people didn't want to see you box in December you're now not boxing in December how do you feel about that because I know it was something that you were adamant that you were going to do um, now you're not how do you feel well after the Bracamonte fight I went back home I had a few days at home um, I wasn't feeling human for a few days obviously it was a bit of a hard fight you know I think it was a bit overstated how hard it was I mean it wasn't easy but you know fights like that happen all the time you know had a few because I had a few cuts and bruises, and I'm known for getting and for taking a bit of stick. I think it gets overplayed a little bit. It wasn't as brutal or as hard as people said. You know, I had to I had to grit my teeth and get through it. But it wasn't. It's not like it wasn't a career ender or like a anything like that. You know, it was tough, but that was it. You know, I've had hard fights right back at sharp there. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. It's, it wasn't. It wasn't a massively big deal, but. You know, I took on board what the likes of yourself said and obviously went home, spoke to family members, what they said, uh, spoke to Eddie. You know, the overriding opinion was, you know what, have a little bit of a rest, six fights this year. The Yoka fight was the one that was the difficult one. The Bracamonte fight was hard, but who the fuck is that? Yeah, so we were saying the Bracamonte fight wasn't the most difficult fight. You were saying that the, the Tony Yoka fight was the fight yeah. of the year, as it were. Well, basically, people are saying, like, you've had so many fights this year, you've been getting it around the head a lot, you know what I'm saying? This year in sparring, I would have probably done 50 rounds sparring. In world title fighters, they'll do 100 nod in preparation, do you know what I mean? So, Lenroy Thomas fight lasted two minutes. I had one headbutt. That's the only punch, that's the only punch I took in that fight, really. He was like, oh, Lenroy Thomas, whatever. I took the headbutt. The Dave Howe fight, I never got hit, the four-rounder. Nebo never hit me. Nick Webb didn't really hit me. Everything was slip and slide the lot. So, there's only two fights I've took any stick in this year, and that was the Bracamonte fight. It was like I say, it, it, it wasn't easy, and I did take a bit of stick, but nothing major. It was the Yoka fight that was the problem. And from the Yoka fight, uh, going straight into the Web fight, and straight into the Nebo fight, and straight into the Bracamonte fight, it's just been it's just been full on, and people say, "Oh, you're never in shape, you're never this." After the Yoka fight, you know, I didn't really want to box ever again. The Web fight came up, and I, like I said, like I said before, I took it for the money, and I won it. Not accidentally, because I knew I was going to win it. Like I, I had full confidence I would win it, but wasn't really asked if I did or not, because I wasn't really bothered about boxing again. And then Eddie's like, come on, let's do an Evo. And I think, you know what, I want to rest. I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll take it. Took the Nebo fight. Well, I didn't know it was Nebo, but I took the Newcastle date. I did it, and I thought, fuck it, I can't be fucking bothered with this. I want some time off. So I did it. I weren't in the best shape, but I took the Nebo out. And then, like I said, and then it come down to the, the Manchester Arena fight. I ended up being two and a half weeks. I was off the show, and then they put me back on. And I'm just thinking, I can't be bothered. But if you give me a date to fight, and you give me an opponent, I'm going to fight, aren't I? So I just, I just did it, took it. Because that's, that's what my career's been like. It's been a case of, Dave, do you want to fight in two or three weeks? Or do you want to fight sometimes six, seven weeks? It's like, well, not really. You know, it's not ideal for me. But it's like, well, there's this amount of money in it for you. And it's on a big show. I think, oh, fucking all right, I'll do it. You know what I mean? So, but I'm happy because I'm not fighting on the 8th or the 22nd, but I sat down, I spoke to Eddie, and I got, and I realised, you know what? My next fight's going to be a really big one for a lot of money on a big show. 
So, you know, I wish I was fighting somewhere. I'd love to fight in Sheffield Arena. I love Sheffield Arena. And I wish I was fighting on the 22nd at the O2, but it, what it comes down to is I could have fought. I could have fought, really, realistically. I couldn't have fought on the 8th. Medically, I wouldn't have been cleared. I clear, I'm cleared tomorrow. So I've not been sparring at all, either. <laughs> so, um, so um, what was I saying? So, yeah, I would love to fought on both days, but... It, but it's not a case of me. I would, I would have loved to. If it was up to me and there was no fans and there wasn't paying to join in, I would have done. But realistically, I would have, I would have weighed in 19 stone, out of shape. So I just thought, you know what? I haven't got time. And I need to stop taking these fights because the only person that's paying for it is me with people saying, you're not in shape. Two and a half weeks notice and this and that. You know what I mean? It is an excuse, because it is a real excuse. That's why I'm not in shape. It is difficult. So maybe I should be in shape all year round, but I'm not that man anyway. But you know you know what the, the, the thing to eradicate that happening is just to not take him, to say, you know what, no. And now for the first time in my career, I can sit and I can say, you know what, I can say no now. It's not a case of Ed, Eddie's doing me a favour, really. I'm not saying to Eddie, oh, don't do it. I, I wanted to do that, because otherwise I'd be, otherwise I'd be doing nothing. But I'm at a point in my career now where I can turn around to Eddie and say, you know what, like, no, I don't need to now. Financially, where I'm at, everything, I can just say, you know what, no. And that's nice, you know. Um, and I've proved it before. When I when I get eight, nine weeks to prepare, like the second London of Thomas fight, um, the Cardiff fight that never happened, we're getting into fantastic shape, you know. And that's what can happen again now. Every, my career now can go where I want it to go. And, um, and realistically, that's probably the first time it's been like that, you know. Even when I've been in the home corner, since I beat Webb, it's not really been massively on my terms. So now for the first time in my career, things are on my terms now. Not only am I in the home corner, but I'm in the home corner with the notice of when I'm boxing, with the backing of with everyone around me to say, look, you've got this amount of time. Even and, You know, fair play to Eddie. Eddie. Eddie really wants to see me do well. And then, um, you know, he's saying, look, let's put a team together behind the scenes. We're staying with me. We'll put a team together for you in a, to enable you to do that and to be able to be 100%. I'm really happy with everything at the minute. Everything's come together now and everything's perfect, really. I, I couldn't, there's nothing, I, I, there's no excuses at all. I'll never use excuses. I know people say, oh, he's, a, he's making excuses. Well, it's not an excuse. That's just the facts of it. I don't need to make excuses. I've been beat many times. I've been beat loads of times. And every time I've held my hands, I've said, look, yeah, I've, I've had short notice for three of them, but I got beat by the Batman. I could have had three years notice for Ortiz, Yoko and Mike, but I wouldn't have beat him at the time anyway. But the fact, the, the fact remains, I did get the call with two and a half, three weeks to go. So there we go. But we're here now and I'm happy now, so we, know, we, can, we, can, we can talk about the past, but what it's done is done. Now something that seems to always crop up when we speak, whether it's on camera or off camera, is kind of, when you're not boxing, I know you get, anxious about about not having something to strive for not having not being on the cars in Sheffield so not boxing tomorrow has there been any of that or have you have you tried to keep yourself occupied in different ways you look better today and, and sound better than mm. than potentially I was expecting knowing that you wanted to box on the 8th and the 22nd how have you been been all right I've been sparring haven't I? I've been down here um you know life's never perfect I don't have anywhere to live at the moment so I'm here there everywhere it's not ideal but at the same time, it's nice, I like it, it's a challenge. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you've ever not had anywhere to live before, but it's a challenge. Like, hmm, where am I going to stay tonight? You know what, I like to be on my toes, I like to be, uh, I like to be not knowing what I'm doing. I've been sparring. Um, I'm going to the Sheffield show tomorrow. I've been keeping busy, you know, it's nice. Cause I'm at a point in my life now where I can do interesting fun things. I can go to the show tomorrow and... I'll get to sit ringside. I won't even have to pay tomorrow either, which is nice. Because <laughs> usually I go to all the shows, yeah, and usually I have to pay to get in. But I was like, you know what, maybe I don't have to pay now. <laughs> so it's sort of me out getting in for nothing, which is nice. So me and Mick, and me, Mick Monty and Danny were all going, all four of us. So, it, it, you know, it's just nice. These things are nice. So I sit down, you know, you know, it's not I Sometimes I'm a lunatic because that's what I am. I can't help it. I do go a bit, I am a bit mad sometimes. And it'll come out of nowhere, I'll just be sat there and I'll be fuming for something, or I'll be down, but you know what, I'll just look at it and I'm so um, in a privileged position, really. So I can't sit down for long, because sometimes sometimes I think 
with people with certain problems to get down and um, if if life's good you'll not be down as long I find when life was bad for me and I, and I got down the same way I do now if things were bad you stay down a lot longer because there's nothing really to pick you up whereas now I'm down but then I'll just think fucking hell things are alright actually fucking hell let's get fucking up and let's fucking let's do something let's go and spot Dylan White let, let's go and let's go and do something you know and I can do that now which is nice. People say Rolex watch. I don't have Rolex watch, but I can go and have dinner on my own somewhere. You know, so it's just I'm just so um, I'm privileged. You know, I'm so I'm really happy. I'm re I am happy in life. You know, I wish I was boxing to be honest, because I fucking love it, but I'm not. And I'm one of them that's saying, you know what? If it if it's meant to be, is if it in it in and and like we said earlier, for me getting out of boxing really, I want to get out of it financially secure. And, and and be healthy enough to enjoy it, and that's the key. How sparring gone with Dillian White? And this is not the first time you shared a ring, whether it be sparring or in an actual fight. How's he looking? How have you found it? I'm not enjoying it that much, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, he's really fit. He's really fit. And the the Dillian White out box compared to now is like night and day. You know, the Dillian White out box was like. Probably where I'm at now, probably. So to see the levels he's gone through, and I was thinking the other day when I was I was watching him, so I did a few rounds in the other hour and I watched, and I was thinking, you know, when I had boxing, I think Dylan White might have been 27. I'm 26 now, and I think, you know what? I think, I think the David Allen myself of today is better than Dylan White that I box. So to see where he's got in the three in the two and a half years prior. The levels he's gone through, it gives me hope to fucking hell. If I just put the same amount of work, I can be where he is, because he's improved massively. And I think we're going to see a, a, I think we're going to see a, a much better Derek Chisora than we ever have. I think this is going to be the best Derek Chisora, because I think Derek Chisora has always been a hard man and tough and underrated with his boxing skill. He slaps that right hand, but everything else really is pretty, pretty good. Really, he's, he's a good fighter. So I think December twenty second. I think Warrington Frampton is a fucking brilliant fight. I think the undercard. I can't really say what I think about it. the Frank Warren undercard is is top notch in my opinion. Uh, but White Chisora for me is is going to be exceptional. Tell me about Adam Booth. Now, last time I saw you um, was during fight week for the Bracamonte fight. Um, there were certainly discussions, um, well publicised, the fact that you went and spent a few days with Adam Booth. Before we kind of go on to your decision to stay with Mick, tell me about going to train with Adam Booth. What was it like? Well, I've seen Adam, I, I, I've not known Adam for a long time, but I've known I've known who he is, obviously, for a very long time. I was a massive David Hay fan as a kid. Before I started boxing, I loved David Hay. Um, so I got talking to Adam Booth on the fight with obviously Josh Kelly and me, like identical twins. So, you know, I got speaking to Adam lovely fella and um, so I said yeah I'll come down to a few days in the gym you know because I thought it would be a good crap Michael Conlon's a good lad in it Michael Conlon I really like Michael Conlon Josh Keller said yeah I'll come down to a few days you know not not with the expectancy of going that, uh, to train there full time or anything you know because obviously he works with Conlon Kelly and Burnett that's three possible or already world class men so you don't think Dave Allen from Doncaster is going to join that group do you really so so yeah, that's cool. We got on really well. Like his team, uh, all of them. Like that. Like I got on with them really well. The fight. I said, yeah, I go down. So anyway, the fight happened with Bracken and I think, and I'm sat in the changing room. And I think, fucking hell, something needs to change. Some I'll need a change. So I thought, you know what? I'll go down with Adam. I'll have a few days, enjoy it. You still don't really think he's going to take you on because you know he's he's very um, picky and he takes on because he he's got the money and he's got everything. He's comfortable in what he is and what he's doing. He doesn't need to take anybody on. He's only going to take them on that he wants to. So, so I said I rung Mick. I said, Mick, I'm going to do a few days at Boo. I said, I'll call you when I'm back. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. And I said, if I do, you'll be the first to know about it. You know. So then he said, Yeah, Mick's there. Yeah, Sam, whatever, David, you do what's best for you. Do you know what I mean? So I said, Look, I want to. I said, Mick. So I literally said, I said, Mick, I'm going down to a fucking few days. Do you know what I mean? Because he's hearing his voice. Oh, fucking, he's going. I said, I said, Look, I said, I'll ring you when I get back. So I did a few days of Adam, and I I like everyone else watched Adam on IFL, and, and you're a bit like, fucking hell, like, is this man a bit strange? Because that's the top and bottom of it, you watch him, and you think, fucking hell, like, he's a bit of a weird character. But I met him, and um, 
Obviously, I knew him a little bit from the fight week, but not properly. Took me into his house, made me chips and um, chips and chicken, and he, and he had me in his house and around his kids and making me dinner and just the nicest man. Like I was, couldn't believe how nice he was. He was just the soundest fellow ever. The whole team, the gym, everything. Conlon was there. Uh, everything. It was fantastic. It was probably as good a few days as I've had in boxing because it was new and I enjoyed it. So I spoke to Adam, we had a good few days training. We didn't discuss anything really. It wasn't a case of, he didn't say to me, David, do you want to train here? That, that was never put to me anyway. So anyway, I went home, we had a great few days, I really enjoyed it. Um, and more important than anything, I enjoyed his company. I thought, what a nice fella he is, you know what I mean? So anyway, I left, I went back home. I didn't contact Mick straight away. I said, you know what, I'm going to have a few days off. I was so when I left there, you know. But I enjoyed it. People say, oh, you're lazy, you don't like training. I enjoy training. I had eight weeks with Peter Fury at Bolton. And if you can survive eight weeks there, you can survive eight weeks anyway. You know what I mean? I could go anywhere. I could go in the Marines after doing eight weeks there. I lost about two and a half stone. Just put a sweatsuit on and go on this machine. It's fucking brutal. But I do it, I don't mind it. The diet, I don't enjoy it. I fucking hate the diet. I, I struggle with the diet massively. But in terms of training, I train, I train all day. I don't mind training exercise. I've been doing it since I was six years old. I've been training. Exercise doesn't scare me. But anyway, so I had a couple of weeks, well, about a week, and I texted him. I said, Eddie, um, I said, can I speak to you, please? So anyway, he me, fair enough, he run me straight away. I said, you know what, Eddie? I said, I said, I, said, I want to stay with Mick, ideally. I said, because we've been, we've been talking about the brown fight and whatever else, and I thought, you know what? I've not, I said, first and foremost, I've not lost the fight with Bracken Munster. I didn't lose it. Secondly, we're getting close to a big fight. Me and Mick have come all this way together. I'm not really, I don't really want to cut him loose now because we're here. Thirdly, me being a big fat lazy cunt is not Mick's fault, it's mine. It's not Mick's training. It, Mick's training is not the reason. Mick's had world champions, you know what I mean? It's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. It's the fact that I. It doesn't matter if you if you Mick Mars and Adam Boo or fucking I don't know, so Ollie Willoughby, but I would listen to her. <laughs> it's it's difficult because as a human being, it's what I am. And people say, well, Mick's like you in the ring with all teas and that out of shape. Hey, mate, if Mick wanted to do it, you know, for the fact I'd have gone, all right, mate. It's in a bit. I'd have got some. I'd have got some random and said, have you got have you got a British boxing body control trainer's license? Yeah. Well, come and do this corner son, while I fight all teas. So me and Mick are really close and. It's not that he can't do the job. He's perfectly qualified to be, to do the job, but I'm I'm not willing to um, I'm not willing to say to say bye to Mick when we're so close to getting to where we could get to. So I texted Adam. I said Adam, I'm really grateful that you have me in your home and and stuff. And the training was fantastic. I think Adam Boo's probably the best trainer in the world. But he, he never said he was going to train me anyway. He never said he was going to train me. I think he was impressed with me and, and whatever else. And I think I think we enjoyed each other's company. We got on really well, Adam Boo. I said to him, I said, I hope we can remain friends. I'll see him in Sheffield tomorrow. I'm excited to see him. Because I do like him. Um, but the top and bottom of it was, I, I explained to you the three reasons why. Earlier, Mick's my friend. And we'll see it through to the end. Same with you, Rob Tever. If you're my friend, we'll see it through to the end. I left Mick before to train with Peter Fury five years ago. We're not the same relationship as we have now. If you're a real friend to me, we'll see it through to the end. And that's what me and Mick will do. And if, if I won the British title with anyone else, Adam Boo with anyone else, it would be fantastic. It would be one of the best days of my life. When we hit Mars, I'm going to pick him up. Like dirty dancing. He's going to run across the room. I'm going to pick him up. It's going to be the fucking greatest day ever for both of us. And that's what's going to happen. All I've got to do is put the shift in and get fit. Like I for, look at Lenroy Thomas, the rematch. I was in great shape. That was with Mick. There was no complaints then. I turned up out of shape due to me being me and he's the worst trainer in the world and he needs to leave and I don't agree with that and I won't allow that for how it to end because I think if I left me now I think it'd hurt I think it'd hurt him in the case of people say oh that mate Mars is no good when that's not the case you know so I'm I'm not willing to leave him well I'm not saying that I'd turn on Adam Boo because the, the offer was never there even though I feel like maybe it could have been but it, it you know what I mean Adam Boo don't need me does he really? <laughs> you know, he's got three of the best fighters in the world, hopefully. I'd love to see them all do well. So that's the top and bottom of that, anyway. Do you feel like there's this, because it was very well publicised, the fact that you were going to do this time with Adam Booth, 
Do you feel like now you've, I mean, for all intents and purposes, there's no offer on the table, but I think it's safe to say that had you pursued it, something could have happened. The fact that you've stayed with Mick, do you feel like there's any extra pressure on you now to, to kind of make sure you don't balloon up in weight and turn up with with kind of no real preparation for a big fight? Is this, is it is it going to make a difference now you, you've conscientiously sort of stayed with Mick as opposed to pursuing Adam Booth, who is one of the best trainers in the world? Well, I spoke to William, what I said to him is, look, I'm not interested in turning around as we all know South Americans. A, because they're very fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> and B, because it doesn't do anything for me. What I want now is, I want Lucas Brown. If I beat Lucas Brown, I want Joel Miller. If I beat Joel Miller, I want Anthony Joshua. Do you understand what? If I lose to Lucas Brown, then I come back down to my sick level again and I give it another go. And then I'm done. You know, I know how many runs I've got. I've got a run, my next run now, hopefully Lucas Brown being next is my run. I'm going to make a run at a world title, effectively. That's effectively what I'm doing. People can say, Dave, you're fucking off your head. But I'll say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm here now. I'm rated 47 in the world on Box Rec. Um, I've got a few good wins behind me. I'm experienced. I'm ready to give it a go. You know, I, I'm ready to give it a go. But beat Lucas Brown, I'm I'm ready for, I'm ready for the fucking... I can box Joel Miller or something like that. And if I beat them, you know what? I will shoot my mouth off till I get it, till I get a fight like that. And people say it's a million to one shot you beat in Brown and Miller. Fair enough, maybe it is, but I'm gonna give it a go. And you know what? I'll get paid well in the in the interim, and my profile will only get bigger, and I can come back and have a British title shot like we said earlier. I, I beat Brown, I lose to me like I have a British title shot, then I pack in. I lose to Brown, I come down to the domestic level, win or lose, then then I pack in. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna be boxing for much longer. People say, well, fucking hell, Dave, that's not that's not what we're gonna hear. Well, that's the truth of it. You can't say to me, we're worrying about your health, and then the next person say, fucking hell, Dave, you should say you want to box 10 years. I don't want to box 10 years. I want to make my money, I want to win my titles, and I want to get out, and I want to, I want to remain... Uh, I'm not saying I want to disappear off the face of the earth, which I wouldn't mind some days, but I want to... Um, I want to make a run for the world title. <laughs> That's what this is now. Operation Rhino 5.0. We're going for the... <laughs> we're going for Brown. Hopefully the Brown... I'm talking about the Brown fight has happened. It's not on yet, but... That's what I want. If I beat him, I want the I want the Miller fight. That's what I want. As mad as that may seem, I want them two fights. And if I and like I said, I I'm just thinking out loud. You beat Brown, you lose to Miller. I come back and box the British title. I beat Brown, beat Miller. I box Joshua. I face Brown, lose him, come back, have a domestic fight. If I lose it, I'm done. If I win it, I go for the British title. Do you know what I'm saying? So the options are all there. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited till Brown clocks me on. I think, fucking hell, this plan for shit. <laughs> now, I listened to your boxing life stories with Tris Dixon, brilliant, and shout out Tris Dixon, is doing some brilliant work on BT Sport and his life stories. Um, and he mentioned in that, and this is something that we've spoken about, um, kind of the long-term impact of, of boxing and taking too many shots. Now, this is something that, while, while you've been aware of it, you've not really paid too much attention to in the past. It seems like now you are thinking of an exit strategy, not in a sense of, of kind of, I don't want to do this right now, but I'm going to box on for money. I know you want to still box now, but you are more aware of that. Yeah. What's brought that on? You know what, Rob? I feel, um, as a man younger than you, I don't want to make you feel old, but I feel, I'm feel i starting to think, you know what, I'm 27 in March. Um, I'm going to live to see 50 now, more than likely. Which, as a 20-year-old, 21-year-old man, you never think you do. I've, always, I've said it numerous times before. Where I was brought up, it wasn't like Compton or Syria or anything, but you don't really think about life at 50 when you're 20. But now I'm 26, nearly 27, I'm thinking, I'm going to get old one day. And, and I never really thought about it before. And I never really thought about, oh my God, I might end up slurring my speech, I might end up CT, I might end up with all this kind of thing. But now I'm thinking, you know what? It's a real thing, it's, it, this could really happen. And I can and I can see fifty on the horizon now. Time's going so fast. I can see fifty. It's scary. I can see thirty, and then thirty turns into forty. When I have kids, when I turn thirty, my kids are going to be eighteen in like a blink of an eye, like I was. All of a sudden, I'm forty-eight, and I don't want to be forty-eight. My eldest is eighteen. My youngest is about seven, and I'm slurring my speech. They can't understand the word I'm saying. I'm stumbling around the house. I don't want that, really. And I've always had of fights at the very end, and. And I always and I always meant that, and I always will when I'm in the ring. But I um I'm, I don't know really. I guess I guess I'm growing up and I'm looking at life. I used to look at it with some machismo and a bravado of I'm not bothered what happens to me. But you know what? 
I am actually. <laughs> you know, I am. I want to. Uh, I want to have kids, and I want to. I want to give back to the younger generation. I want to go and do things after boxing, and and I'm no use to anybody if I'm fucked, am I? So, it's not. It's not an exit strategy. And when I'm in the ring, there'll be no thoughts. Oh my God, what am I gonna do when I'm 45, 50 years old? When I get in the ring, it's a case of well, you're gonna have to fucking do me serious damage to get me out of there. But but yeah, I guess you know what I am. I'm not looking at an exit. I am looking at an exit strategy in terms of like how many fights can I get to where I can be as successful as I want to be, and then get out. It's not a case I want to get this money and get out. It's a case I want to get this money. I want to win this title. I want to do this, this, and this, and then get out of boxing. But that's how we should all look at boxing. I just think I'm 26 years old, which is really young, really. Um, I have had a few hard fights. And I was thinking the other day I was tallying up my time in boxing. I might have been in boxing nearly 10 years now. I sparred over 500 rounds against Joshua. Hundreds with Tyson Fury. I'm tallying up quite a few with Dylan White now. I box Ortiz, Yoka. You know, you've only got a certain few miles on your clock. And um, all boxers running them up, but I'm not all boxers. I'm me, and I only worry about me really when it comes down to it. And down to in case of that, I've only got to worry about me. I can't worry about anyone else. It's their life. They live it how they want to live it. So yeah, I, I just want to get out with my faculties intact. And people can say, oh well, his his arm is slid already. I'm fortunate that I'm from Doncaster. You ain't gonna tell the fucking difference anyway. <laughs> I sound like this. I'm fucking seven. I've never been punched before. So, in that regard, I'm lucky, but I just want to get out. I just want to get out, most importantly, healthy. With my finances intact and achieving all the things I want to achieve would be a massive bonus, but really, I want to get out healthy, you know. All that talk of, oh, I'll do this and that. I just want to be healthy, really. Um, and at the minute, I am. And I want it to keep that way. So what changes are you going to make? Because you've said this to me in the past, um... And you've not made them. But you've said, I mean, I've seen the tweet where you said you're going to get a strength and conditioning yeah. coach. We've spoken about it and putting a team together behind the scenes, as it were. What steps have you made or what steps are you going to make between now and your, your return to the ring that will guarantee that you'll be in a better shape and you'll be in a better mindset heading into the ring? I have a fantastic team in terms of my personal team, in terms of my sister, my sister's husband. You know, they're very fortunate to let me stay here. Uh, I've got my friend Tom, who supported me for a long time. In terms of, most will call it sponsorship, but it's, it, over time, it went from sponsorship to a real friendship. You know, same with Lee, um, and and Lee and his company, they've got a sports psychologist on board that I've worked with previously that will hopefully continue to carry on. Nutritionist, strength conditioning. The team is all there. You know, I want to see Eddie Saturday. We're gonna have a. He wants to help me put a team together. I've only got a team in place with everything that I've deemed necessary is there. Mick will do the boxing. I'm very fortunate that Darren Barker willing to help me out on, on occasion. Um, everything's there, you know what I mean? Like I've said it numerous times. Everything's there for me if I want to... It's not a case if I want to win. I'm going I'm to put it all together. And we'll see. I'm not sitting across from you now saying I'm going to be world champion or I'm going to be even British champion. I can also look you in the eye now. I'm not sure I could beat Kamil Sokolovsky on a bad day. You know, excuse me, you know what I mean? Yeah, but at the same time, I'm not saying I can, I'm not sitting here saying I'm the greatest fighter in the world. I'm just saying I'm going to try and be that. And then, but I'll go back to what I said earlier, the chance is there now. If I don't turn up in April, if I'm not, in April, if I'm not under 17 stone 6, ideally 17 stone 5, 17 stone 4, I want to be, then I might as well pack it in. You know, on the camera now, I'd like to look into it and say, if, I, if I'm not under 17, so six, unless I've gained a lot of muscle, which I may have, because I can do that physically, I'm that kind of animal, you know, then then please, Eddie, don't work with me again. Because I have pissed it away. Because I've got till April, hopefully. But four months, in four months, if I can't get in shape in two and a half weeks, then shoot me, I can't, I, you know what I mean? Like, I can't. If I can't do it in four months, then there's a serious problem where I shouldn't be doing it, but... I said before, twenty. Give me, te give me eight weeks in Cardiff. I turned up in immaculate condition. The same at the the Lenroy Cemetery match. Um, the team, the team is there. The only thing that's been lacking at times is time and 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 this a brain. 
Um, you know, I can only go over it so many times. I've said to everyone, let's see what happens in April. Let's see what happens in April. Come on in April, effectively. See what happens. If I don't turn up in shape in April, then fucking hell, I deserve all the grief I'm going to get. But when I turn up in six pack, four pack, when I turn up in good shape, <laughs> I don't promise six packs, so I'm not sure physically I can get one. But when I turn up in April in good shape, win, lose or draw, there's nothing I, c I can't. I will be at my best, and you know what? If I get knocked out, I get knocked out. But I will be, I will be at my best. So let's see what happens. I never promise anything. Only my best. Last one on Adam Booth, really. <clears throat> you mentioned what a nice man he was. The fact that you went and, and spent some time with his family in his home. What was he like as a coach? What sort of things did you do with him from a from a technical boxing perspective? You know what? He just said to me like, um, he's really smart, man. Really smart. More so than nice. I say smart than he is nice. And he was really nice as well. No, you know what? He's smart in terms of. You know, when I look to be friends with somebody, I look to. I wouldn't say attracted to, because that sounds, that sounds a bit peculiar. But I, I like someone to be intelligent. I want to be around intelligent people, because I like to know new things. And I was sat with Adam. And he's just smart about everything in life. Like he knew everything about everything. And I like that. Um, in terms of boxing, I'm not going to sit here and say what we were doing. So obviously, that's what makes him successful. I'm not going to start telling everybody what he does. Everybody will start doing it. But it was good. It was nothing like groundbreaking, like new stuff. Like oh my god, I can't believe like he just put a fucking Deontay Wilder gimp mask on me and fucking <laughs> made me do. Exercise I've never seen before, but you know what? Obviously, it worked for David A. Working for his training now, and I personally would say he's the best trainer, and the best coach in the UK. I can't speak worldwide. So he's, I've worked with some fantastic coaches. And I'm not going to say I don't want to say he's better than them because I think I truly believe that coaches work better with different fighters than they work with other. You know what I mean? Like um, David Hay maybe wouldn't have worked as well as someone else needed with Adam Booth. Maybe they just clicked in his training work for him and whatever else. So I've worked with certain trainers and I thought oh, this this is it's not it didn't work because physically and thinking yeah, I wasn't I wouldn't I couldn't fight how they wanted me to and it just didn't work. So I, I would never I don't like to say the trainer's better than another trainer. What I can say about him is he's exceptionally smart and he's a he's a very he's a very uh man manager, like like an Aaron Redknapp kind, although totally different, <laughs> totally different, but completely the same, like, um, people say, well, Dave, why are you saying this and not training with him, but I've got to do what's best for me, I want to be able to look in the mirror and say, you know what, in 20 years' time, when I'm taking Mick to the nursing home, I'm going to visit him, <laughs> you know what I mean, I want to be able to look him in the eye and, and know that we went through, we went to the end together, and people can say, well, that's an excuse for this and that, well, it, it, it's not. It's not, you know. People say, well, you left so-and-so before. Yeah, I didn't have any loyalty to him. My loyalty is only to people that are good to me. You can't be loyal for being loyal, say. You can't just be loyal to anybody, because that ain't loyalty, that's foolishness. But Meek's always been good to me, was as close as, as, as anybody can be um, for the relationship we have got, if that makes any sense. So my loyalty to him is... is I'm, I'm not going to go, you know. I do know how to try to train and have a look, yeah. But, um, but we're here. We're here now. We're in Leicester. And we're still trained by Mick Marsden. And we're still going to do everything we want to do. What did Mick say when you spoke to him? I mean, was there a conversation where it was like, look, it was kind of like Jordan Belfort, I, I, I'm not leaving situation. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what happened? What, what did he say when... Uh, he, Mick strikes me as somebody who's quite understated anyway. Mm. Um, what, what was that conversation like? No, obviously, I went, when I went down, I said, I'll ring when I get back. And I just said... And, he, and he, I rung him and he said, oh, how are you doing? You all right? Obviously, it was a bit like... He's probably thinking, and he said, he's thinking, fucking hell. You know, he's thinking, oh, I bet he's gone with Adam Booth, because Adam Booth's one of the top trainers in the UK. And I said, mate, I said, look, you know, I'm not, I said, look, we haven't, we you know what I mean, we haven't finished, have we? 
we, if we want to, I said, if we, you know what I mean? If we want to break silence, yeah, now we have to, what are you, what are you doing then? I said, I'll be in the gym, February 1st. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a bit of time. Because I've never really got fit before. I've always went to the gym, started doing the boxing training, started trying to train on the track doing the 800 without any groundwork being put in. But, you know, I said to me, I said, look, fucking let's crack on in it. We both got to kind of prove people wrong together, in a way. And I've never been interested in proving people wrong. I want to prove people right, but you know what? Let's fucking show me, you know what I mean? We can do it. I'd like to think, in the back of his mind, he knew I weren't going to go anyway, you know? And that's not to say I went down to waste Adam's time. I went down to a bit of training with him and see how, and see how it was, and it was fantastic, you know? Um, and if Mick's hand fell off tomorrow, Adam would be the man you'd want to go to. Hopefully Mick's hand don't fall off. <laughs> Can you imagine? But um, I still do one-handed pads. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't like one-handed pads. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Things are going really well, Rob. My end. Something that I also saw you tweet about, this is not something you've said to me Certainly not seriously, but I kind of got the impression seriously that you want to try WWE one day. <laughs> I think, you know, I watch a lot of wrestling. I watch it every night. I watch it from two, at the minute I'm watching Triple H from 2000, 2001. So I want to put a playlist together. So anyway, when I finish boxing, hopefully I'm, hopefully I'm out of boxing at 28 years old, hopefully. In terms of fighting, fighters are coming to me and I'm like, oh, would, would, would you manage me? Obviously I've got Danny Murrell training. They, they want to be, hopefully I could... You know what? If, and if I do choose to go down that route, hopefully I, I don't. I don't want anything financially off because I was, I was a professional boxer back in the day, even though I still am. I was a young professional back in the day, and I was like, I remember it was like to not make any money. Thinking, fuck it, I thought professional boxing was going to be a millionaire out of it. So I don't want to make anything financially out of it. But if I can help him out in any way, and it'd be it'd be interesting to look at it from the other side. So it's something I probably will try and get into. Training Danny Morell, you know Danny Morell. Everyone knows Danny Morell. Danny Morell. Danny Morell. He's the biggest name who's never boxed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I want to do. But in terms of, I want to do other stuff. I want, I want to do wrestling. And I think I'll be fantastic at it. I can cut a promo. You know I can cut a promo. I'll take the mic off you right now and cut one. You know, and um, I want to get living. Because even though people say, well, you've not lived the life in boxing. I haven't I haven't trained 100%. I'm not, I'm not an Anthony Fowler by any means. But at the same time, I've not really lived the life the last six years. Because I've always been like, oh, I've got a fight in four weeks, I'm fighting, so I can't do that. Even if I sit in the house with a fucking Kit Kat, I ain't going out and doing stuff I could be doing. But I want to try wrestling. I think I'd be a fantastic wrestler. I think I'm like The Rock. The Rock 97, 2001. I see a lot of myself in him. <laughs> you know, he's got that charisma, hasn't he? And I think I, think I can do it. I'm going, to come, I'm going to be like this generation of The Rock. I think maybe not. But I'm going to give it a go at some point. I'm going to try wrestling. I'm going to have an MMA fight as well. Just one. Amateur level, I'm not interested in getting my head caved in, I want to win it. <laughs> um, I'm not taking on Randy Couture like Jay Stoney did, I want to know my level. I want to uh, I want to do that, I want to, um, and that's probably it to be fair, <laughs> I don't have that many ambitions, I want to, I want to, I want to be a WWE, I want to be, a, I, want to, I want to bring back the Attitude Era, I want to go in with those naked base station birds, <laughs> like the Godfather with the hoe train, I want to go in and I want to, I want to, I want to. I want to be a WWE superstar. Maybe not. Maybe do the like ITV British wrestling thing. I don't know. Probably have to start there. <laughs> Go, we got to start somewhere. I might start on the. Might start there. I never watched that, but I'm sure it's good. I don't even watch wrestling these days. I just watch it on YouTube from back in the day. I love it. I love wrestling. I love Pokemon. Um, Somebody made your card. Any Pokemon card? Look, you can see my Game Boy Advance over there with Pokemon Red in it. I'm about to fucking. That's like on the Elite Four. <laughs> I'm ready for him. Um, yeah. Not the life of a normal... Man. Normal man or normal <laughs> professional boxer. Ben Davison messaged me last night a picture of a white rhino. He's like, all right. He said, how are you doing, mate? He said, yeah, obviously, he said, we had a busy time with it. He said, what are you doing? I said, it's half two. I said, it's half two in the morning here. Playing Pokemon. Listening to Elton John. And I may or may not have a pack of Monster Munch in my hand. You know, um, that's how I live my life, Rob. Um, 
when boxing said and done, I'm going to continue, not continue, because obviously for the next year I might have to put my ideas up. But I'm going to, I'm going to live my life. I want to live it for the for the last twenty, thirty, because I'm going to put a lot of weight on. So I'm not, I don't know if I will see seventy after all, but I'm at least going to see fifty, and I'll be massive when I do. And uh, and hopefully, I'll do everything in boxing as a fighter. Then I'll have managed and trained Danny Morell to superstardom. Or at least to where I'm at right now. <laughs> Getting to this level I'm at now would be nice. Get him here. Then I want to manage some other kids to win in area titles. Because I'd get a right buzz off that. And then I want to go and be the the, the, the most entertaining, electrifying man in WWE today. And then I want to go and maybe ride a Grand National winner. May struggle to get six six and a half stone off. But you know, you never say never. And then I want to, then I want to go and win the, the BDO. Which I think I can win the BDO, not the PDC, but the BDO <laughs> is a possibility. I think I could win it. I average I average forty one. So I'm up there. I think I could make the semi final against Wolfie Adams. And then that's it then. That's all I wanna do. That's my life. So that's hopefully if I could paint my life out now, that's how it'd go. What's it like? I mean, this is one of the first times that we've sat down and you've spoken pretty much exclusively about the future. You're but somebody who's very much always caught in the moment, particularly boxing wise. Yeah. You can't really see past boxing. You're talking about all of this other stuff, and it's nice. It's refreshing to see. I think certainly the the opportunity to manage younger fighters is, has kind of given you a bit of a glint that I don't often see when you're talking about things that are other than yourself boxing. Yeah. What's that like to be approached by young guys who are who are looking for you to guide their careers? It's really nice. I was speaking to Tris last week. He's like, what are you going to do after boxing? I want to go and fuck off and never be seen again. <laughs> you know, and on a certain day, depends when you catch me. People say, you're very, um, I'm not sure what the word is, where you say one thing and, you, and the next minute you say another. Contradiction. I'm very contradictory. Cause I'm very contradictory as a person because of my mood as a person. Like, one day I can be the happiest man in the world and I'm ready to win the BDO. <laughs> the next, I, I don't want to see anybody. So it just depends on the day you catch me, but... Managing young fighters, you say, yeah, very nice, really nice. I think um, I read I read boxing forums. Me, I do read them. Someone said the other day, you got to congratulate Dave Allen on. People say, oh well, he's not the most talented, so why is he getting those opportunities? He's a fucking mastermind of, of the social media thing. And when I first did it, like I always say, when I first did it, there was no ulterior motive in thinking, oh, if I do this, I might get this out of it. But you know what? But now I think, you know what? Fucking hell! I am a mastermind, accidental mastermind, accidental genius is still genius, is it not? So hopefully these young fighters, I think these young fighters looking and thinking, you know what? Like these local lad, one from Doncaster. I mentioned, I'm not mentioned him actually. I don't want to mention him just yet because it doesn't. If nothing happens. I said to him the other day. I said, there's no pressure. I said, I don't want to take a penny off here. I said, if you want to do it, you want to do it. If not, you want to go somewhere else and go somewhere else. He's a nice kid. I just said, look. Do what you want to do. I'm not going to mention him in case he just goes somewhere else and they know he's been talking to me. But anyway, I just, um, it, I've always been the same in life. If it's, if it's for me, I don't really, I've been known not to put 100% in, that may shock you. But if it's for myself, I've been known not to put 100% in. Like, I'm a bit like, oh, I'm not bad, it's only me. But for someone else, I'll go to end the end earth for him. So it'd be nice to have it because I, I think I'd be good at it. And if not, Uncle Mick obviously will help me out. I spoke to me and said, oh, mate, this kid wants to, like, thing here. He's like, yeah, I'll let you out. And I think it'd be exciting. And for, it keep me involved in boxing. And Mick said to me, when he finished boxing, he took two years away from boxing just to make sure he never boxed again. I think he said two, a year or two, like, he didn't have anything to do with it. And I think, you know what, if I am if I get involved in the managing and training, so with Danny Morell, I'm his full-time trainer for the rest of his career. I'm not sure he's, he's put a bit of weight on, to be fair, that's that prick. <laughs> You're getting too much like me. But, um, yeah, I think if I get involved with something like that, it, when I do finish boxing, it'll keep me away from it. I'm really looking forward to it, you know. And, and I've been a pro six years now. I've been around, been around boxing a long time. I've seen how things work and, you know, it's, let's see, what, I, I, I'd like to do it. Let's see what happens. You never know, you might see me in the suit one day. You know, matching going over the world now. If they need someone to take over the promoting side of it over here or in Germany, where I speak the language, yeah. I'll do it. I'll, I'll I'll take over there. I'll take over wherever they want. You know, um, 
on a on a good day for me i'm really sick on the world you know which is today <laughs> i'm gonna work for boxing social i'm fucking taking over everything <laughs> I'm going to do some social life all on the same day. I'm going to do all, <laughs> all of it. Um, life is exciting for me right now. The opportunities are endless. Um, and for the first time in my life, not just in boxing, even though even though it's my own boxing career, boxing should weigh me down because I used to think, you know what, if I lose this fight, my, my, my life effectively over because I've got nothing other than boxing. When I lost to Dylan White, I thought my world had ended because I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do now? But now I think, you know what, if I've got Luke Brown knocks me out in the next fight, if that is the fight, I've got other things to do, which is nice. Which in one way, you know, the, I put a hundred, I will put all the pressure on myself to win the, all the fights, but it's nice to know that it, it's, it's effectively not the end of the world for me. How are things with your dad? I know it's a, it's an up and down relationship to say the least. Um, I know that you spoke to Tris about it briefly. Um, any update? Have you spoken to him since? Well, I know you spoke to him off the Bracco Monte fight. Of <laughs> he watched the interview with you after the Bracco Monte fight. He said, I like Rob Tebbett. He, he goes, who, he went, who, who's Rob Tebbett? I thought, fucking hell, what's up now? <laughs> he went, I like Rob Tebbett. I said, yeah, I like Rob Tebbett as well. That was the Monday after, that was the 12th. I've not spoken to him since. You know, uh, he'll watch this. And um, he's been a bastard lately. He's been very well. He's been very badly behaved. <laughs> I've not spoken to him, but he's, he's been a bastard lately. I know he watches this, and he knows what he's been doing. But that's life. He's my dad, uh, and as he's my dad, you know I have to respect him and love him. But I don't speak to him ever again. I don't. I don't. I don't mind. Well, that. Do you think that's healthy? moving forward because I mean I know you've spoken to me about yeah. it and I know you, you have your issues as we all do with our family members but here's somebody who who has kind of put you on this track and now you are I mean today I understand more than most that today you're great tomorrow you might not be yeah. but to be in such a good place as where you are now is that not something that you would like to to kind of sort out as it were not really no you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk about my life story, but thingy. But it's um, even though at least a couple of thousand people are going to watch this, it's not. Um, obviously, he'll not want me to air our business publicly, but at the same time, um, sometimes too much bridge goes under the water over a sustained period of time for me to care, and I don't care. It's not that I don't care, which is my dad, but there'll be no effort from me to ever speak to him again. As long as we both may live. He'll probably outlive me, to be fair, but uh, no interest. No interest in it at all. So, Tyson Fury. Look at that smile on your face. Um, you're one of the few people who was resolute in in kind of... I know you know Tyson very well, but I also knew that it wasn't a sense of kind of blind favoritism or or allegiance to him. Spectacular performance against Deontay Wilder in Los Angeles. Break down the fight. I, I I've always said Tyson Fury is the most special man in the world. Like in terms of his boxing, in terms of not his boxing, something about him, something. Uh, there's just something about the fellow as a as a man. There's an aura around him. You're around him, and you know you're around. People, people, you say to me, "Oh, why don't you suck him off?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, it's not, it's not like that, really. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really attracted to him. I just, just kind of like him. But there's something about him. He's just, he's just as a human being. There's, there's, there's something that's really special around him. And I think he showed that again the other night. He does things that nobody else can do. We've seen it, the, the knockdown was a bit like the Spielka knockdown, but but yeah, he gets up. And not only does he get up and get through the round, he gets up and he wins the rest of the round. And and that's what I've been seeing for years. People have always said to me, he doesn't beat he doesn't beat Wilder, he doesn't beat Joshua, he's not gonna do this, he's not like good, he's been down by he's been down by Pikich putting down, Cunningham putting down, Firth putting down. And I'm saying, trust no, believe me, if I know anything about boxing, I know that Tyson Fury is the best fighter on the planet. And I think it anyway. I think the fact that he's nine, he's only six foot nine. You see the stuff that Lomachenko does. 
it was five foot six, five foot seven, and nine and a half stone. I think what Tyson's doing at nineteen stone is comparative to the movement we've seen of Lomachenko. Would you agree? Mm. I think it's comparative the 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 level of movement, speed, and everything to what Lomachenko's doing. I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing. I think Fury is the nineteen stone equivalent of Lomachenko. I think he's that good, and I always have. I've sparred him. And I, you can't lay a glove on him. And I, I'm I'm a decent fighter. I'm what I am. I'm not I'm not exceptional, but I'm a good fighter. And I've sparred all of them. I've sparred Joshua, um, Klitschko. Don't know why all I can hit him. If nothing else, I can lay a glove on him and I can hit him. I can have a bit of success. Tyson Fury, you can't. And the other night I watched it and not you know what I didn't have it. I didn't have it as wide as everyone had it. I thought Tyson won seven rounds as clear as day. I thought he won seven clear as day. I think the two where he got knocked down. I think he won one of the ones. Like, I think he won both that he got knocked down. He got knocked down. So you got to say two ten eight. I think the other three rounds were up for debate. Um, so mathematically, I'm not sure how that works out. If you give the other three to Wilder, you have it by Wilder by a point. Um, over the duration of a twelve round fight, if you're not going round by round, Tyson won easy. Tyson boxed his head off. You can I'd tell it up mathematically. I probably had Tyson winning by a round, maybe two. I don't think it was a it wasn't a landslide on the cards. But you know what the scary thing for me is? That's Tyson probably fifty percent. That's the real scary thing. Like I thought he won the fight, but on the cards I can see why it could be close. The one fifty one level mild is scandalous, isn't it? And I think over the duration of a twelve round fight, Tyson clearly the better man. But on the cards the two knocked down for me made made it pretty close. I think on the night I had it Tyson by two. And when I thought when I looked when I when I thought right well seven seven two with three up in the air because there was some rounds in there where early on there wasn't much going off. And like I said, I'm Tyson Fury's biggest fan. But for me, if Tyson Tyson winning by a round or two, probably fair. Like it wasn't a landslide, was it? it wasn't one twenty one oh eight. Then they're not down and made it close, made it a little bit closer. It wasn't that kind of fight. Um, but he should be he should be WBC heavyweight champion of the world now, and that that would have capped it all off. But for me, I kind of think the draws in my favour. I think he's made him a superstar. I don't think he's as popular as Joshua is, because Sky and Matt have done such a fantastic job of making him a fucking superstar. You don't even hear from Joshua anymore. Like social media is quiet. Everything's quiet. Only when he fights, you really hear from him. But yeah, he can still say Wembley out like that. But for me, Tyson now isn't far behind him. I think Tyson Wilder sells out Wembley. I think Tyson Joshua sells out Wembley. I think Tyson against anybody sells out the MEN. So if he had the WBC title, obviously he'd still be a superstar. But I think the draw and everything around it is kind of, if nothing else, will make the Wilder rematch bigger. So I don't think the draw. I, I, I was obviously I was disappointed that he didn't get it, but. I'm just really happy for him. So I um, some of, some rounds in there, like it was just fucking, it was just unbelievable to watch, was not it? People don't realize how. First, they don't realize how big he is. Secondly, they don't realize how hard it is when you're a big fella to move. Anyway, but when you're six foot nine and nineteen stone, you're doing that. It's just fucking. And you got love handles. He's got the man's got love handles, and he? he's got serious. I always say to me, he's got he's got the biggest love handles I've ever seen. He's got the skinniest legs. It's, it's just, it's, you can't fathom it. Like how he does what he does is unbelievable. He's got all that. But he's probably, the, he's probably. The, I think, and people say, "Fucking hell, Dave." I think, apart from Muhammad Ali, he might be the naturally talented heavyweight there's ever been. Lennox Lewis was fantastic, but in terms of fucking pure ability, Tyson Fury for me, Muhammad Ali aside, is is the most naturally talented heavyweight we've ever seen. And Muhammad Ali was a cruiserweight, effectively, for most of his career. He wasn't that big a man. So Tyson Fury, for me, may go down as the, as the most naturally gifted everywhere in history. He's that good. And I've said it for years and years and years. And I think we're very lucky now that we'll see him after a while the fight. He's going he's gonna to fight two or three times a year. And we'll see what he really can do. I've seen him in the gym, sparring, training. And I've, and I've always been thinking, I've always thought, oh, fucking hell. Like what we're watching here, in terms of his ability, 
but more so than his ability, his fucking brain, his, his free moves, right, everyone else. I know Wilder putting down twice, but I'm only putting down twice. That's Tyson at about 50%. And Wilder would knock you out if he touches you. He only, took, he only grazed him a few times. Tyson was slipping and rolling, and I'm thinking, fucking hell, Tyson, get on his chest and shut this fight down now, please. But he's slipping and rolling and sliding and ducking against a, probably the hardest punching man in the world. And um, it was unbelievable. I struggled to stay away now past, past a certain time. I was up late last night, weren't I? I have two, but he's a, he's a special man, isn't he? You know, I've not texted him or anything. Not texted him. He's a busy man, isn't he? But hopefully, hopefully he watches this. I'll put a comment on his Instagram, actually, he liked it. Hopefully he watches this. Um, you know, well done to him. I had just. My mum, like I said, my mum, my mum read an article, I think it was in The Guardian, maybe 2010. She went, who's this Tyson Fury for? I've told you this story before. She went, she went, who's this Tyson Fury? And I was like, oh, I think it's a pro 2008, 2009. I was like, oh, he's a boxer. Like, I used to watch him on ITV before the Hennessy days. And I'm like, why? She's like, he's, he's, this man's like, he is the same as you. I think, I think you know what? I think the Quality Street story was in there, how he takes all the rappers off his Quality Streets before he fucking. Eats him and all that. He was talking. About, I think he was talking about his his prob certain troubles back then. I think. And she was like, "Tyson Fury is 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 you." I'm reading this, and it's like I'm reading. It might as well be about you. So I've always had that little thing with him since then. And over time, got to know him. And um, he reminds me of myself. I, I think he's fantastic. <laughs> I always say he reminds me of me. He's, fant- he's just fucking. I admire him, you know. And I don't I don't admire a lot of people. Not out of thingy, but I just don't. I don't get thingy by a lot of people. I used to see Tyson two or three... At one point, I saw him every fucking day. And uh, and up until recently, before he went out there, I've seen him two or three days a week. But still, he's one of the only men when I see him, and I think, fucking hell, Tyson Fury. Do you know what I mean? Even, even at the point where he's quite a good friend, I still like that around him. He's got a lot of aura around him. And I think he'll go on and I think, I think he'll beat Wild, I think he'll beat Josh, I think he'll beat them all. I think. <laughs> what fight would you like to see next? Would you like to see Wilder Fury 2 or would you like to see Fury Joshua? Fury Joshua. In an ideal world, I'd like to see Tyson Box, a pure Lev, an Ortiz maybe. I think Ortiz is there for the beating now. Not not by me, I'm not saying by me, but I think he's there for the beating by these top men. I think they're, he's really old. I was against Kaufman the other day, and Kaufman was out of shape, and Kaufman gave him a few problems, not not offensively, but defensively. Ortiz couldn't really do much with him because his legs are too slow now. I'd like to see Tyson box a pure eleven Ortiz, a Parker, somewhere somewhere around that. Like these really good heavyweights, that they're really good, but they're not on that. I, for me, I just think that the Wilder, Joshua and Fury, there's kind of a little bit of a dip beneath them, like a little bit of a gap. They're the really late, and I think you got Dylan White. A few beats just already goes number four. Um, and Dylan White, like I said earlier, Dylan White's turning into a really, really good fighter. Like, really, really good. Cause Dylan White's a lot of, People think Dylan White's just a hard man who's a slugger. He's fucking really intelligent. The boxing, like, really good. But I'd like to see Tyson box, box one of them. I think he sells out the MEN against a Parker or an Ortiz. I think he sells it out. I think he sells it out against fucking anybody. He could sell it out against me. Um, that's what I would like to see. If I was looking after him, I wouldn't want to throw him straight back in with Joshua or Wilder because he doesn't need to, really. Uh, I'd like to see him, say Pula, I'd like to see him fight Pula, then Joshua, in an ideal world, I think. I think he beat Wilder. Like I said, I don't think it was a landslide by any means in the round. And, 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 and I can see why the cards were close, but I think he won. And I'd like to see him fight, Joshua's the biggest fight in British boxing history. Fury Joshua is the biggest fight ever. I think they could sell Wembley five times over for it. And I think it'd be it'd be really injustice to all those boxing fans if that fight never happened. It should happen. And while I think Tyson would win, he wouldn't rule Joshua out in it. I think it's, I think that's the fight we need to see. But obviously it would have been nice to have it if all the belt if they had all the belts. I'd like to see Wilder Joshua happen first. Fury Fury might could box still on might. That'd be a fight I'd be interested in watching. That'd be a really good fight. 
Dylan beats Zora. They're the top four men. Wilder, Joshua, Fiori White. That's what, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a promoter yet. <laughs> but yeah, I think them them three names, all them three fights taking on each other, taking each other on. I don't think you can get a bad match apart of it. So so yeah, Joshua Wilder, Wilder Fury, Fury Joshua. Any of them, I'd, I'd watch any of them. I'd pay to watch any of them. What did you make of Wilder's performance? Um, attracted some criticism. I think general consensus is that Fury won the fight. But he still scored two knockdowns. He was dangerous literally until the last moment of the fight. Um, do you think he's given his just credit? Wilder technically is poor, isn't he? You watch him and you think, oh, he, like, he, he looks like a raw novice still. And I watched him against Stavane, only a minute long, but he looked all right there. Like He looks a bit ungainly, doesn't he? But I think that's just his build. Like, and, like he had a good job, but with you, Tyson will make you look bad anyway. He'll make anyone look bad. I know if Tyson boxed Joshua, even if Joshua got to him and knocked him out, Joshua would look terrible. As long as that fight goes on, you know, if it goes 12 rounds and Tyson wins, or it goes six rounds because Joshua catches him with an Hail Mary, it, he'll, he'll, make him look, he'll make anyone look bad, Tyson, because that's his style. He'll make, he'll make you look bad and frustrated. But um, Wilder's pretty poor, technically, isn't he? But the one thing I never gave him credit for how tough he is. He's really tough. Mm. I, was, <laughs> I, f I was thinking Tyson would knock him out early because I knew Tyson would have success with him. And he caught him with a few straight right hands, I think, in the fifth or the sixth. And Wilder never budged. He took his lumps, didn't he, Wilder? He's, he's 15 stone. And Tyson can punch. And he had his little gloves on. And Wilder took, didn't have a bad night. He took them all. Tough, fit, powerful, strong. He's just an athlete, isn't he? He's just an athlete who would have learned to throw a few punches. Because technically he's poor. If Wilder had the athletic ability of both being, it, it'd be awful, wouldn't it? But you've got to give Wilder credit. Because even though, like you say, he did lose the majority of the rounds, he did put him down twice. And we can sit, I can sit here, me and you can sit here and say, what, Tyson Fury is the, the greatest uh, heavyweight, pure heavyweight boxer of all time. If we're going to say that, we can't sit here and say Wilder's no good because Wilder gave him a, run for, a real good run for his money, you know? And like Tyson says, history will, history will always show it was a draw. So don't take Wilder, we'll take some beating off anybody. Because he looks like a real, nail, you have to nail him down merchant to beat him as well. So I, I give Wilder all the credit. I think Wilder's, um, I think Wilder gives anybody in hard fight. I think him and Joshua will be really exciting. I think Fiori Joshua the the most exciting fight for me personally due to having spent time with both and knowing that it would be a real grudge match but Wilder Joshua for me would be really exciting and one that would, and one would definitely get knocked out in that fight 100 percent so I'm happy to see any any a combination of the three any of them fight we've mentioned the WWE during this interview. Tyson Fury rose like the Undertaker in the twelfth round. I think that's the kind of the the line that's gone around. Were you expecting him to get up? Because I know you know him, and I know at points in your career you have had rose tinted glasses with regards to Tyson. But were you expecting him to get up? Because he was out. I thought you know what I said. I think I actually said it Saturday night before the fight. As long as he's not unconscious, he's going to get up and carry on and fight on. And I thought it was out cold at first. I thought, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I was literally, it was like about quarter six in the morning. I thought, oh, fuck, you know. Because I, I was with the thinking, if he stands up, he's won the fight, you know. Since the fight, obviously, I thought it was a bit closer than I thought it was. But at the time, I thought, fucking hell, Tyson's pissed this. But I thought, all he's got to do is stand if he can get, even afford to get knocked down once. I thought, oh, my God, he's out. Just count of five, he sits up, all right, he's up. But even then, I'm thinking, oh, my God, Wilder's going to, Clean him up now, surely. Well, that's the kind of man he is. I, I know. You, I, 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 like I said, there's some, there's some in him. He's a special man. You know what I mean? Um, and when he puts his hands behind his back and he's carrying the full fucking, he's all right. He's good. And I'm thinking he's going to take Wilder out here in the last, in the last minute. I thought Wilder's punched himself. He's going to take him out. And that would have been an exceptional one. That would have been the cream. That, that would have just been the fucking. That would have just topped it off. But. But yeah, I don't. I never doubt him. Never doubted him. Um, I didn't have a bet on Saturday because obviously the betting was seasoned to start that. 
But the clicks go out, a good pet on the clicks go for I don't doubt him. I don't doubt him. Hopefully, like I say, hopefully he does I don't want him to fight a while ago, Joshua Nice, but if he does, I'll I'll be a full bully if he beats him anyway. Just for a bit of extra longevity and just to give him that extra you know, just just give him that a bit more confidence. I'd like I wouldn't like to see him, but I wouldn't bet against him. I I said I wouldn't bet against him being a fucking polar bear. Underwater. The polar bears live underwater. I think they they go underwater. Yeah. I'd have him I'd have him being I'd have him being a polar bear underwater. In a steel cage match. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people say, Oh my god, you're out of his arse, but stop and bottom of it. You can't when it's like like you, like whoever's at the top of your game, you've got nothing but you can only admire and respect him and you've got a lot Tyson Fury is, the, is for me is the is the number one of what I do, heavyweight boxing. I can only look at him and say, Fucking hell, that's the main man. The same way I look at Joshua, I even look at Joshua and Wilder and say, Fucking hell, they're unbelievable men. But Tyson for me on a personal level as well. So f- fuck anyone who doesn't like that. <laughs> okay, well it's pretty a long one even for us. Um pleasure to sit down with you and it's really good for me because we sometimes sit down and you're not in a good place we, we mentioned it earlier on that sometimes you're in a good day sometimes you're a bad day it seems like it is kind of 50 50 when we sit down um pleased that you're in a good place particularly after not boxing in december um before we go it's kind of customary now for you to grab the mic which you haven't done for oh, the yeah. interview which i'm glad what message have you got to your legions of adoring fans who are looking forward to seeing the White Rhino back in action, thankfully, in 2019. This is the plan. We we go April 2019, I believe. Hopefully Lucas Brown. Hopefully, you know what, I'm just going to come out of it. Hopefully Wembley on the Joshua undercard. I hope the Brown fight there. I think it's a good fight. Um, and if it does come off, what I want to say is, Believe in me. We're on a long journey now together. Me, you. If you're watching this and you're a fan of me, we've been on a we've been on a long, long road together. It probably started for the majority of us, the Gavin fight. Not even the Gavin fight. Maybe the interview after where I was calling out David Price and saying I was going to do awful things to his jaw. But we've had the White fight. We've had the Ortiz fight. We've had the the disappointment of the Thomas fight. We've had the cut with Lenroy Thomas. We've had the fight in Cardiff. That never happened. That never was. We've had the Yoka fight. You know? And then we had the web fight. We had the brilliant web fight. Then we had the Nebo fight. There's only one David Allen in Newcastle. That was fantastic. If you're watching this and you was there, thank you. We had the Brocamonte fight, which which now looking back feels like a loss. I feel It feels like we all lost that night when really we didn't. Really what we've done is we set up a blockbuster in 2019. That's what we've done. So what I will say is, what all the naysayers saying, you should have done, gone with Boo, you should have left your trainer. Comment after the next fight, let's see what happens in, in the next fight. I don't promise anything other than to try my best, to try my best. And in 2019, you'll see me try my best, to try my best, I will be the best that I can be. And I think the best that I can be will will give us a very exciting and fruitful 2019. Next year, maybe my family is a professional, so let's give it a good go. Me give it a good go, not you. You just watch and enjoy. Because I will entertain in some way. And 2019 is going to be a big year for me, for you. And I want, if you watch this, I want, I want you to think I am talking to you. Because... Um, this journey, like I said, with Mick, it's been a personal journey with me and him. And, and I'd like to think, like me and you, Rob, I'd like to think, me and you, you're on this journey with me. I feel like when I get in the ring, I feel like you feel like you're the bit of you in there as well. And I feel like all the people that support me and got me where I am now, I feel like I want you to feel like you're there as well. And I feel like you do, and that's really special to me. And I promise my, my best to try my best. So... I'll probably see everyone on the other side of 2018. I'll see you all in 2019. Nice of Rob Tepper to come down to Leicester today. We'll say hello to everyone. Big thank you to everyone. And um, I'll catch you all very soon. Thank you very much. Boxing Social. Big up Boxing Social. Dave Allen, 
Always a pleasure sitting down with you. Nice to see you in such good spirits. Look forward to seeing you next year. 17 stone 5. Give or take. <laughs> Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you.